Hello everyone, welcome back to yet another learning video. Do you know that GC is a widely used instrument in the pharmaceutical industry? And GC instrument is regularly calibrated to know whether all of its parts working properly or not. So in today's video, we will learn that what are the various calibration parameters of a typical GC instrument. So let's get started without any further delay. Before knowing the various calibration parameters of a GC instrument, we should firstly know that what are the various parts of a GC instrument. So let us understand what are the various parts of a GC instrument with the help of a Agilent Make GC. So these are the four main parts of a GC instrument. Number one is rotor sampler, number two inlet, number three oven and number four is detector. Now let us know a little bit more about these parts. Firstly we will talk about auto sampler. Auto sampler. The main function of the auto sampler is to collect the sample from the sample vial and inject it into the GC inlet. Generally, GC instrument comes with the two types of auto samplers, ALS and HSS. So this is the ALS and this is the HSS. ALS means automatic liquid sampler and the HSS means head space sampler. Now the question arises, what is the difference between these two auto samplers? So answer to this question is when sample is injected in the liquid form, then ALS is used and when sample is injected in vapors form, then HSS is used. So this was the basic difference between the ALS and HSS which we should know. Now comes the second part of the GC instrument which is called as inlet. The main function of the inlet is to vaporize liquid sample and send the vapors of sample into the GC column. Generally there are two inlets in Agilent Make GCs and they are commonly called as front inlet and back inlet. Here you can see the locations of both the inlets in this picture. Inlet present in the front is called as front inlet and inlet present in the back is called as back inlet. Technically speaking then front inlet is called as split splitless inlet and the back inlet is called as purged packed inlet. Now the question arises why there are two inlets. To know the answer note down the point that there are two types of GC columns. One is capillary column and second one is the packed column. Here you can see the pictures of both the types of the columns. So whenever capillary column is required for the analysis, then split splitless inlet will be used. And when the packed column is required for the analysis, then purged packed inlet will be used. So I hope you have understood the difference between two types of the inlets. Now comes the third part of the GC instrument that is the column oven or we can say that the oven. So this is how a typical GC column oven looks from the inside. The main function of the column oven is to provide high temperature as per analysis requirements. Generally, GC column is kept inside the oven and one end of the column is connected to the inlet and another end of the column is connected to the detector. So this is all about your oven. Now comes the fourth part of the GC instrument that is detector. Mostly GC instrument comes with the two detectors, FID and TCD. FID means flame ionization detector and TCD means thermal conductivity detector. So both these detectors have different principles of working that we will discuss in another video. So this was all about the four main parts of a GC instrument and the basic information which we should understand before learning about GC calibration parameters. Well friends along with these four main parts GC instrument is connected with the gases supply as well. Generally four gases are utilized during the GC analysis and uh, those gases are hydrogen, helium, nitrogen and the air. Here you can see the different gases with their different color coding. As I said in the beginning of the video that during the calibration all the parts of GC are calibrated with the help of different different test parameters. So let us know about the all calibration parameters one by one. Firstly, we will know about the calibration parameters of ALS. ALS means automatic liquid sampler. So ALS is calibrated with the help of three calibration parameters and those are reproducibility, linearity and carryover. Now comes the HSS. HSS means head space sampler. So HSS is calibrated with the help of four calibration parameters and those are reproducibility, carryover, HSS oven temperature accuracy and HSS sampler loop temperature accuracy. Now comes the inlet. So inlet is calibrated with the help of one calibration parameter and that is temperature accuracy. Now comes the column oven. So column oven is calibrated with the help of one calibration parameter and that is temperature accuracy. 
Now comes the detector calibration parameters. Let us suppose we have a GC instrument with the FID detector. Then FID detector has four calibration parameters and those are detector linearity, temperature accuracy, drift and noise and signal to noise. Now comes the last calibration parameter which is related to carrier gases. So all the carrier gases are checked for the flow accuracy test parameter. And generally digital flow meter is used to carry out this test. So guys this was all about the various calibration parameters of a GC instrument. Hope you have learned something new today. Bye bye and happy learning.